The first thing that you'll start out with when modeling is a primitive, one of the default shapes that you can find in Blender's Add menu. These pre-made objects will be your starting point for anything that you model, so it's good to be familiar with them. You can find primitives either in the toolbar under the Create tab, or in the 3D View header under Add and Mesh. Now, all primitives are, are an arrangement of vertices, edges, and faces. So when it comes to choosing which one do you want to start with, it's not exactly a life or death decision here, since you can technically make any one of these out of any other one. For example, if we take this cone here, if we delete the top vertex, turn the circle on the bottom on its side, and spin that around, we would have a torus. If we added a lot of vertices to this plane here, and then smoothed that out, we would have something like a circle. So the most important part of choosing which primitive to start out with is more about which one will cause you the least amount of work, or which one will let you get to your desired result the fastest. For example, we have two things that look like spheres here. We have a regular sphere and an icosphere. Now an icosphere might be really good for modeling a soccer ball because it has all of these evenly spaced triangles that sort of make up circles and we could make that soccer ball pattern fairly easily. That would be really, really difficult to do on a UV sphere because all of the edge loops come up to a single point here and the faces are not evenly spaced at all. But at the same time, if we were modeling something like a doorknob, it would be really hard to do that with an icosphere because it's made out of triangles so we wouldn't be able to use edge loops at all. So it really all depends on what you're trying to make and which arrangement of the geometry will be most effective for that. Another example is here on layer 2, and that is with a head. So this is just a simple head base mesh, and when you think of a head, it's mostly spherical. That's kind of the shape that it's closest to. But in fact, if we were to actually use a sphere, we would get a result that doesn't look quite as good because all of the loops come to a single point here at the top of his head and everything's kind of stretched out and it just doesn't look quite that good. We need things to be evenly spaced, especially for base meshes, and we want it to be smooth all around. So here I've actually used a cube and smoothed that out and then moved some of the vertices around and extruded the neck. So very simple process here but it gives us a much better result, even though a head really looks nothing like a cube. So don't necessarily think which one looks like your end result the most. Think more about how those faces are arranged and whether or not that will be uh, as most effective as possible and whether or not the layout of those faces and loops will allow you to get to your result quickly. Now, when you add a primitive, you'll have a few options. So I'll press Shift A, and I'll just add a UV sphere, and you'll get these options here in the bottom left. If you don't see this menu, just click this little plus button and that'll pop right up. And you can also hit the hotkey F6. That'll bring up the menu and you can drag this around, but I don't use this too often because as soon as you move your mouse off, it'll disappear. So you can change some of these settings. For example, decrease the segments, change the size, generate UVs automatically, this is only for some primitives, or align to view. Now these options will be important to pay attention to, and I'll talk about this a little bit later in terms of keeping things nice and simple, but just be aware that this is really good for planning ahead. So if you already know that maybe you want to make 16 little insets around this, then you'll know that you'll have to set your segments to 16. Or if you want to make 8 insets, but they need to be 2 faces wide, you'll also set it to 16. It's also important to note that if we are going to plan on mirroring anything, it's good to use an even number of segments. So for example, if I were using 17 instead of 15, this would be really hard to mirror because we don't have any loops going directly across the X or Y axes. So while whatever primitive you choose isn't necessarily the most critical thing, it's still really important and thinking carefully before you start modeling uh, will definitely save you a lot of time in the long run.